Hey YouTube, what's going on? It's Chris here. Wanted to bring you guys a little update on Bitcoin. And what we're going to be looking at is actually the Bitcoin shorts right now, okay? So if you guys could like, subscribe, all that, I really appreciate it. It helps us out. Love being here with you guys. I think it's really important that we look at these shorts today because you have to remember, bulls make money, bears make money, pigs get slaughtered. And that's a book that I'm reading right now. It's called Rule the Freaking Markets, and it's how to profit in any market, bull or bear. It's a really good one, guys. Um, his name's Michael Farness, and it says, or how I turned $33,000 into $7 million in 15 months, and here's how you can do it too. So it really goes through everything in terms of shorts, longs, you know, covering, not being greedy, all those different things. It's a really good book. This is my second time reading it. But the bears are getting cocky, guys. The bears are getting, in a way, they're acting like pigs, okay? And when that happens, you can have a short squeeze that happens, and that's when the shorts have to cover along with volume coming in from buyers. So just like when we get overextended to the upside, you can get overextended to the downside as well. So I want to point that out for you guys because right now the RSI is at 75 for the shorts. So you can see them right up here. And what the shorts have had, though, do you see these moving averages like we talked about? They're pointing up. They're in the direction that they want to continue to go up. So they're acting as support right here, guys. They're all the way up at 36,116 right now. So they're starting to overextend themselves. Okay. And that's really important because that's when they would have to cover, guys. If they get overextended and the price starts to run on them, they have to close, they have to cover. And then that's how, basically, with them covering along with the volume coming in, that's how you make runs. Okay. So I wanted to point this out to you because 75 is getting up there, guys, on the RSI. So you can see all time highs where these have gotten before. We have been up to around 81 right in that range. So we're approaching it, guys. And that's what I wanted to show you. And I don't know if many people have looked at this chart or not, but when things get overextended, just like up here, we got all the way up to 40,000. And then what happened, guys? We went from 40,000 all the way down to 18,000. And we're approaching that again. It almost looks like we're trying to come up here and we could have a double top to where we'll get pushed back down again. But it's really important to keep your eye on these things. So the next thing let's look at, let's look at the longs, okay? So these are some of the things that I like to look at, guys, just kind of see where we're at. So Bitcoin, and now let's go to the longs here, guys. And you can see down here, look how low we have gotten, guys. We are at 24,000. So look how many more shorts there are than longs right now, okay? Let's check out the RSI, see what that's looking like. And you can see how low we are on the RSI, guys. I think that's 30, 33 right there. But you can see we're starting to get a little bit of a hook up right there. And it looks like this candle here, if we could close that there, almost have one of those like Haramis almost at the bottom coming off here. So that's something I really want you guys to pay attention to. The close is going to be really important. So we wicked down a little bit here. We got to about 24, then we got bought back up. So what we'd like to see is this real body close within this body right here. Now, we also have those overhead resistances at 28, 9, 21. Then we have around 30,000 there, and then 32,000. Okay, so keep your eye on this chart. You can see we're starting to get a little bit of a hook right here. It'd be nice to see at least a little bit of a run up to about 42 there. Next thing we're going to look at is the actual Bitcoin USD. All right. So this was our trend line, guys, that we've been dealing with right there, okay? So let's zoom out on that first. Kind of see where we're at. And that's our overall trend line, guys, that I drew. That's the one we really need to break out of because if we break out of that, we could run back up, potentially test... 85 and then we have a little bit of room to run up to that ten thousand dollars we need to test that again so the rsi is looking good we're pointing up right now we're at 41 so we're over that crucial 40. yesterday we put in a nice hammer candle that is that's an official hammer candle that's just a slight slight wick on the top but that's okay but you can see that this wick is more than twice as long as the actual body right here and what we're seeing is a little bit of follow through here i still would like more volume I'm not entering right now, guys. I'm being much more patient, okay? I want to see good confirmation, and good confirmation is seeing us up above, especially this 12-day EMA right there. You can see how it's starting to hook. That's a really important thing, but I want the price up above that. I want some confirmation. 
because in this market it's just been all over the place you never know what can happen and I've also learned in this market guys it's really important if you're gonna make a move make sure you put that stop loss in okay you really want to have have a spot where you say you know what if if all of a sudden it blows up some bad news comes out just like when we heard about the ETF when it was just delayed guys which all of us were expecting it was over exaggerated how much we sold off due to that because it's still a good thing and most likely we're gonna either get it passed on the 30th of September or we're gonna get it passed next year it's gonna pass at some point guys and when that happens you can look at the gold chart you see how much it exploded once the ETFs got put on but I don't want to fight this trend. Do you see the 12? Do you see the 26? Do you see the 50 moving average? They're all up overhead right now. So for me, realistically, on the day chart, I would like to see us up above almost all three of these with the EMA pointing up, with the RSI continuously going up. That's what I want to see, guys. Last time when we had these impulse waves up, our RSI got to 78, and then we went all the way down to 29 guys so that's a really big deal you got to pay attention to that overall RSI so I'm keeping my eye on that I'm looking for us to get up above these moving averages which is going to be really important I like the hammer here I like to follow through if we could close this candle right here that would be great and then hopefully tomorrow we can get up over top of some of these so that's going to be a really big deal next thing I want to look at is the MACD see how that's doing we'll check out the histogram as well so the MACD, we have a potential for a cross coming up here. I like this that we're hooking right here. See if we can get over top of that signal line. Also, the histogram is moving into the bullish territory. You can see how we've been going down like that. So that's what we need to continue to do right here. And then we need to flip it over to the positive. So that's something I really want you guys to pay attention to. I love the MACD. It's a lagging indicator. But if you do it right, guys, if you would have seen this cross here, as soon as it crossed, look how much you could have saved yourself. That drop, yeah, you're not going to hit the top, essentially, which if you saw these tweezer tops, you would have essentially known that that could have been the top right there. But when you look at this MACD line, that's really, really important, okay? You may miss 10, 20% of the move, but you could still potentially get, you know, 70, 80% of it, which is good. And remember, guys, bears make money. Bulls make money, pigs get slaughtered. That's all throughout this book, continuously says that. So let's not get greedy. Let's see if we can flatten out these moving averages. And remember, these moving averages, they're just like basically a river, guys. And that's what you have to keep in mind, okay? You can't fight the stream. The trend is your friend. We've heard it a million times, unless you're playing these little reactions. So if you would have seen this hammer candle and you say, all right, that's a good hammer. I'm going to be risky here. You could have got in right here and you could have ran this up today and even made profit right now and said, okay, I'm out. I'm going to sell off and I'm going to see what happens. That's the beauty of these candles. But if we just see a hammer and then we don't have follow through and we fall back down, then basically it was a false, guys. You know, it's not something that's going to continue. So really keep your eye out on that. I want to check the Bollinger Bands for us. Just going to go through a few here, guys. I really want to get in depth the best we can. So... On top of these moving averages, you can see the middle band right here, guys, is around $7,000. So that's overhead resistance as well. Really big deal. You got to keep those things in mind, guys. You can see right here, even with the tweezer tops, we got outside of the bands. And that's where a lot of people sold off. You see just this big volume here, sell off. And then we had those days where it just kept selling off, guys. We've had one, two, three. Let's do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, four, two, fifteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I mean, 15 days right there, guys, of just just bloodbath. I mean, these are some serious candles. So that's where, you know, we may be at a potential for at least a reaction right here. Okay, and guys, that 12 moving average we've talked about, let me get this off here. A lot of people really underestimate moving averages. Look at this 12. We ran up to it, we got rejected. We ran up to it, we dropped back down. Ran up to it, dropped back down. I mean, that's a really big deal. And then once we finally got up through it, we came here, we dropped back down, but we used it as support. You can see it right here each time when we were going up. And then when we broke that, we continued to fall back down. Moving averages are so powerful and they're so important, guys. When we had that cross, we had that nice run up. But the volume just hasn't been there. Like for today, guys, I would have really loved, and we'll see how the day ends, I would have really loved to see a, a candle basically like this one right here. Do you see that? Obviously, that's a negative candle or a bearish candle. But volume is so crucial and people don't look at volume a lot of the time they don't pay attention to it and that's a really big deal like right here that was a bearish sell-off right there that was a big dump 
Okay, so keep your eye out on that. Here's our low that we need to hold is around that 57, 5802 right there where we had that bullish engulfing candle right there where we continue to make our run up. Then let's put the Fibonacci on it as well. So we'll go from that candle there to the tweezer tops. And you can see how much we've retraced, guys. We we came all the way down here. We actually wicked through the 886 there, which was six thousand eighty-six dollars. So we've essentially almost retraced the whole thing. And that's the importance of taking profits and protecting your capital in this in this space. I mean, unless you're a really long-term holder, guys. It's tough because, you know, you see these prices and you say, all right, I'm going to go in. This is a great price for the long term. I'm going to buy it. And if you're not willing to able to buy it, throw it on your ledger and sit on it for a couple years, you know, you don't want to catch falling knives. And we've all been there before when you say, oh, man, this is at the 786. It's at 6,358. I'm going to put in a bid right there, see if we can get it. And from there, guys, we drop down, you know, to 5925. And then you get discouraged. You get upset. And that's just where you, you really have to be in control of your emotions. And I feel like one of the biggest things is using those stop losses, guys. In, in this market right now, we're clearly in a bear market. We're in a downtrend. Any run that we're making right now has been getting swatted back down. And until I see otherwise, that's what it's going to be. We're in that bear market. We make a little bit of a run here. The bears jump in. They swat it back down. We drop to a lower low. All right? So really keep that stuff in mind, guys. And news... It seems like in a bear market that even good news isn't going to move the market a ton, but bad news is really going to push it down hard. So that's kind of the difference between this bear market and the bull market. You know, if we would get all this good news like we've been having for Litecoin and Bitcoin and Ethereum and all these different projects, there's actually been some really good news coming out. If we were getting that in a bull market, it'd be a whole different price situation than what we're dealing with right now. But the, the trend is clearly bearish, and we have to respect that. Okay, so the purpose of this video, guys, keep an eye on the shorts because the bears are getting cocky. Keep an eye on the longs because the bulls could step in at any point. And remember, guys, don't be a pig. When you see profit, take it and keep it in your capital so that you can make another move. That's really important. Okay, so guys, I just had someone pull up to my house here. I'm not too sure if it's the male lady or what, but I'm going to have to run, check this out because my baby's sleeping. I just came home here quick and my wife's in with the baby. So I love you guys. Take care. If you could comment, subscribe, all that, leave it down low. I'm excited to be here with you. We're going to get through this market together and I just want to be here to encourage you and tell you that, you know, things are going to be okay. We just got to protect our capital and be smart with it because, you know, at any point, Bitcoin, like we, we talked about before, could go down to that $4,500 or whatever it was when we put that Fibonacci on it. Remember when we threw that on there and we said this could very well go to the 786 on the macro retracement. Very possible, guys. We've had a lot of very deep retracements, just like right here. We went past the 786 all the way to the 886. So keep that in mind, but I like to see this moving average hooking right here, and we need to get on top of it. That's the big deal. God bless each and every one.